Right, hello everybody and welcome again to one of my live video feeds and I'm going to work on painting a tiger's eye today. So for the next 30 minutes I'm going to go live with you, which obviously I am now, and I'm going to show you step by step how to make a start on painting all the lovely detail within the tiger's eye. Now remember to subscribe and hit the bell. When you subscribe to my channel you're going to learn more about watercolour tips, techniques, materials and many other watercolour ideas using my 40 plus years of painting experience. So click on subscribe down below and uh, You'll never miss a thing. Okay, so what I need to do before anything else, I've got to look at what I've got on here and I'm going to get the drawing on the paper, which I've already done there, ready and waiting, as you can see. So, shall we make a start? Okay, so I'm going to make a start, just one little quick, quick thing, a uh, little message from me, and uh, I'll be back just in literally a minute. So, let me tell you a little bit about patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. There's currently over 80 hours of video tuition for you. There's also tips and tricks videos, full length art videos, a PDF document which will go with that video, the outline drawing, the reference photograph, but most of all let me show you all my techniques from my 40 years of painting wildlife. For the $10 level you get access to all of that catalogue of video tutorials going back for well over one and a half years. Also bear in mind that I produce a brand new video tutorial every month. You can cancel your donation whenever you want, you can downgrade it, you can upgrade it to a different tier. Now I've also got a companion page which will help you navigate Patreon and locate the information and tutorials that you want to find. I've also got a Facebook group which you gain access to when you become a member. So all you need to do is visit www.patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. I'll see you there. Right, well thank you very much indeed for watching that. See, it doesn't take long, does it, eh? It doesn't take long at all. Right, let's make a start on this. Now, as I said, I've already got this drawn out ready and ready to go. Just kind of save time, really, because obviously I'm, I'm trying to show you some watercolour tips, really, while I'm doing this. So stay tuned, as I said, I'm going to go through all the processes, getting the basic watercolour layers, kind of wet and wet layers on the tiger's eye first. Now, because I've drawn this out, it's quite dark, so I'm going to use my pottery eraser just to like this off and this down just a little bit okay um, just a little bit on there and I'm just trying to see what colors I've got ready to go what do you mix some colors up now the reason why I do this is because I just want to be able to just see the pencil marks I don't want them too dark because if it's too dark that pencil mark will obviously show through the paint and you got to remember as well with watercolor is that it is a transparent medium all right so because it's transparent anything underneath normally normally shows through and it depends if you're going to use anything that's uh, opaque whereas most watercolors as you know are transparent however i do use one opaque paint which is uh, watercolor white as well which is uh, one by saa but there's a variety of different ones on the market as well okay right so i've taken most of that off the good thing about the putty rubber by the way you can see all the pencil, I don't know if you can make it out on the camera here. There's a lot of pencil just on the screen here, look. So is that you can just massage it in. Well I said putty rubber, it's put putty eraser now they call it, don't they? And it's different things in different countries. So massage it in and that's ready and ready to go again. A bit like blue tap really, isn't it? Okay, now colours. I've already got some colours kind of worked out roughly as in preparation for this live uh, kind of video feed today. Um, also, oh, by the way, before I go on to this, remember that when I finish on here, within 10 minutes of leaving here, I'll be live on my Facebook page as well. Okay, you can see that down in the links as well down below. So uh, have a look on my Facebook page. If it's not there, if you can't find it, just go on Facebook and type in The Devon Artist and you'll find me, okay? Right, so we're looking at raw sienna, burnt sienna, cadmium orange and burnt umber mixed together. Burnt umber and burnt sienna, lemon yellow and phalo blue, Phalo blue, that's a surprise, alizarin crimson, and also lemon yellow. So you can understand my little scrawls there. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I'll make sure you can. Just about. Let's have a look. Is that better? There you go. Now you can see the scrawls. Okay. Right. So let's make a start on this. Here we go. I'll leave that zoomed in for you so you can just see all the details on there. I need to put my little Patreon thing down the side so people can see that as well. Just to make sure it's visible. There we go. Is that quite obvious? Should I make that one a little bit smaller? Now, I'll put that one there, look. So I'm just doing a live video feed. You've got to remember as well, obviously, I do have a, obviously a Patreon channel. And I teach on there, uh, obviously, wildlife in watercolour and all the detail work which I do. 
So because of that, obviously I've got to make sure that I can advertise it to a certain degree. Now, the colours I'm looking at are all in here. So I've got all them colours mixed up, ready to go within this big palette. It's massive on the screen, isn't it? And I think what I'm going to start off with, as I say, I'm going to work on the eye. But I'm going to go for this raw umber, which is that one there. Got a bit of raw umber um, and raw sienna, actually, in that case. Just make sure it's wet enough. I want this more to a... Probably more to a actually milky consistency, really. I don't want it too watery. Now, when I look at consistencies within paint, I think about, okay, if it's really watery, like the green there, see how runny that is in the palette, it runs like out as if it's come out the tap or the faucet. Whereas if it's creamy, then it's really thick. If it's uh, milky, then it could run down the side of the palette, but quite slow, not too quick. And that's what I'm looking for. So that's how I tend to kind of gauge the thickness of the washes. So watery, milky, and creamy. Or you can have thick as well if you want to. So the first thing I want to do, which is quite a large eye on this piece of paper as well I'm painting today for you, is just wet it down first of all, just using um, a size five brush. This is a sable brush. If you've got any questions as well, by the way, please post them down below because I do want to hear from you. I want to hear if there's anything you want to ask about while you've got me here live on the internet. And if you're watching this on catch up, still put a comment and I still will reply because I do look at my, my uh, YouTube account every single day just about. So, you know, I do make sure I'm here for you. So if you want to put a comment on there, please let me know. Okay. Right. So if you're going to wet this down, but I want to wet it probably two or three times. It's the evening here at the moment. So it's now oh, quarter past seven in the evening. I thought it would come on a bit later, especially for our American friends over there as well. Um, and because it's quite warm here, this will dry fairly quickly. So you've got to re-wet, 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 re and get the words out. And then wash the brush out. And I'm going to go straight into the milky raw sienna. Here we go. We're going to pop this just on this side to begin with because it's going to blend in. It's going to use the water to blend. Now, when you put the water on the paper, you can leave the water to soak in that a little bit longer. And when you do that, you find it won't blend or bleed quite as far on the paper. All right, so a little bit more. And just down to the side there. These table brushes are quite nice. So this is um, the particular one I've got here is Rosemary & Co. I think you can just about make it out on the handle there as well. So Rosemary & Co. And it's a Series 93. So it's quite a nice brush, this one. I've bought a few of these in the past. It's a Spotter Series. It's the actual uh, series. I know other artists do use them as well. They're quite nice. It's not the one I use for my detail work, though. The detail work is usually done through um, my Double Zero brush, which I do like. Now, for the middle, whilst it's still damp, I've got this greeny colour. And if you remember, that was lemon yellow and phthalo blue. And I'm just going to re-wet that a little bit. So it's dried up a little bit in this warm room. And I want to add in, we'll just give it a little dab first. If it's too rich, I'll just soften it down a bit. Just a little bit, and that's plenty. So I'm going to wash the brush out so I can see it really deep into the eye. Because I'm using a very, very large photo for this. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'm going to soften this down just to blend it a little bit more so it's not quite so green. Just a, I just want a hint of it just beyond the, uh, beyond the colour there. And then I'm going to go into a little bit more raw umber. Not raw umber, raw sienna. Got the words wrong then. And add that in. Wash the brush out. It's all about gently adding the colours in and keeping the paper wet. If you can keep the paper wet, then you're doing okay. You know, you've got a bit more working time to kind of get the colour on the paper. Um, a bit more around there, actually, saying that. Okay, so that's that first colour on. This is, as I say, going to dry fairly quickly. So I'm going to go into now a little bit of the um, the Burnt Sienna Cadmium Orange and Burnt Umber. So I've got to find that one, which is that one there. Bear with me. So Burnt Sienna uh, Cadmium Orange and Burnt Umber. And I want to start adding this around the outside edge of the iris, right to the top there, just while the paper's a little bit wet still. 
as I say, you got to think about drying times. And that's one of the things I know a lot of my um, students on Patreon tend to find, not everybody, but some people do find it tricky trying to work out the, the drying times within your watercolours. And it all depends on how much water you put on the paper. It depends on uh, the temperature within the room. It also can depend to a certain degree on the pigment within the paint that you're using as well. So you've got all them things to think about. And also you've got to think about how light will it be when it dries? Is it going to dry really light or will it be pale? Or is it going to be dark? You know, and watercolour very often dries much lighter than when you first put it on the paper. And again, that will depend on the amount of pigment that's in the paint. And also the type of paints you use, because you know, you've know got to remember there are a variety of different quality paints on the market. Now I'm going to go for the slightly darker one now, which is a Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. And again, I'm just going to add this to the very inside edge of that uh, iris, just to start thinking about shape. A little bit of form, a little bit of shape, using the very tip of this big brush of mine. Now this is a big brush for me, yes, honestly. You wouldn't think it, I know. And to the top of the eye. If you start seeing it drying, just be careful because you don't want to end up with some blotchy marks on there really. But, you know, if you do, we'll add it to the effect. As Bob Ross used to say, it's a happy accident at the end of the day. And that's what matters to us. You know, and you can always move things around. I mean, that's the thing about watercolours is that they are, you know, people think they're not forgiving, but I find them they are, they can be forgiven. You can repair them to a certain degree, you know, when uh, these happy accidents do happen. So I'm just going to tap the brush. Now this is quite dark at the top there. Just tap the brush a little bit. And I think, looking at it, this does go, because there's a hair right across the eye. So I'm now going to extend a little bit. I'm trying to see if that is a hair. I don't know. Nope, that's part of the eye there. So I'm just going to extend this all the way around the side here because it's going to be really dark around the side of the eye. So I'm just going to go again for that burnt umber and burnt sienna colour and just pop that in there with a nearly dry brush. Remember, the wetter it is, the longer it will take to dry as well. And coming down to here and to there. Now, if any of you buy the um, the Leisure Painter magazine, if you do buy that, which is the, obviously the Arty magazine, it's quite a good one as well. But it's ideal as well for beginners, intermediates, and um, even advanced watercolorists. It's quite a good one to work on because uh, there's a lot of tutorials in there. And the reason why I'm saying about this is because the next, well, this month and the next two months, I've got a, a step-by-step tutorial on how to paint a blue-eyed cat. So if you fancy having a go at that, let me know. And uh, if you do have a go at that, please post it on, on my Facebook page or something like that. I'd love to kind of see it really and see how you get on with it. So who we got on there? Uh, I'm trying to have a quick look at the internet for you at the moment. So Sam Idriza, hello. Hi Paul, I'm from Iran. Hello there, how are you today? I don't know what the time is where you are. That's quite an interesting one, isn't it? So you can tell me where you're from, what country you're from, and what's the time where you are. That'd be quite an interesting one to know, actually, really well. Now then, while this is drying, I'm going to start defining some of the edges a little bit more. And I'm going to use my double zero brush, this one here, look. And some of the, um, that's the Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna, I think, then. So Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. And what I want to do is just outline very lightly the outside of the eye, just just to kind of neaten things down that little bit more. One of the things I tend to do, by the way, is I usually put some um, piece of paper underneath my hand. So I've got to, I'll just show you what I mean. Something like a normal printer sheet of paper and that's folded over. And that protects the watercolour surface from the natural oils on your hand, or the grease, whatever you want to call it. There's <laughs> natural oils on your hand. And because of that, it's going to make sure that, you know, you don't damage that watercolour paper. Because if you do get some uh, oils off your hand onto the paper, then your oils will act like a wax resist on the paper. So when you try to paint on it, you find that the paint won't stick. So it's like putting a wax crayon on, which I know is another method as well, to reserve the white of the paper. You can't take it off afterwards, but it's also quite handy for using sparkles, water, that kind of thing before you do the painting. I think that's something else. 
So I'm going to just very lightly just outline this eye just so I can depict where it's going to go. So I'm mapping it out basically is the idea. Okay, and then towards the top of the eye. Now, as I said, this is really dark in here. I can just see some light on the photograph. I did say I'm going to show you the photo, didn't I? So if I just show you the photo in question, which is this one here. So you can see what I mean by the detail within the eye there, and that's exactly what I'm working on at the moment. Um, so it's quite a lot of detail, isn't it? So if I just shrink that down a little bit to there, is that better? So now you can see what I'm working on. I'll leave it on the screen just for a little bit longer because it's going to get in the way. I'm trying to see where that goes up to there. Now, one of the things I do use, as I mentioned earlier on, is watercolor white, which I'll be using for some of the highlights. And it's a cracking medium, it really is. I do use it a lot. I know a lot of people prefer to reserve the white of the paper. So, a question again for you guys on there. Well, I need to know where you are, you know, what country you're from. I need to know what time it is. And if you want to answer this question, do you use watercolor white? Oh, that's a tricky one, I know. But do you use watercolor white? That'd be quite an interesting one to kind of you know, listen to an answer on that really well. Now, I'm just continuing with this with Burnt Sunburn, Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to fill this area in, basically, is the idea. Just sort of fill it in. Because there's a, it's like a blue line going around there. So we'll have to use some of that blue colour, the phalo blue within there, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue, that kind of thing within, within that blue line. So you can see that within the photograph, you can just make it out there, look. Um, if I just make that a bit bigger, just see what I mean. When you look at that, you see the blue line on the left-hand side, near the left-hand side of the eye, which forms a curve around the eye. That's what I'm looking at with this at the moment. So just get rid of that a minute now. There we go. And it's gone. Okay, right. So move that around there. Is that better? Okay, right, back to it. Right, the only problem is when you're looking at the monitor at the same time. Right, okay. So have we got on people on there? Seven people watching at the moment. Hello, all seven of you. Thank you for joining me today. So Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. And you have to remember with all these things is that, as I mentioned earlier on, watercolour is a medium which you've got to build up gradually with time. Take your time. There should never be any rush for a painting. Never try and get it done really quickly because that's when mistakes tend to happen. And that's when we all start cursing a little bit, thinking, oh, it didn't go right. Why is it not working? The worst time, I find, is when you're getting to near completion of a painting. All right, when you're just about to complete, complete the painting. You've worked on it for hours on end, sometimes days, sometimes even weeks. You know, and then you think, oh, no, I'm nearly there, nearly finished. And, uh, and then you rush the last bit because you just want to see it finished. That's the worst thing to do, in my eyes, it really is. Now, I'm going to go back into the eye and I'm going to very lightly start building up some detail. And this detail will be softened down between layers. This paper's still not quite dry yet, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to very lightly do this. Skimming across the paper with a size one brush now. Just very lightly. And it's all about, as I mentioned earlier, on building up the details as you go along. Gradually working it. Just a little bit more. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, if you do fancy having to go at, um, a free PDF to, not PDF, a free video tutorial, not free PDF. Oh, there is a free PDF on my email list, actually. If you go to my devonartist.co.uk, so devonartist.co.uk website, and you find, if you could join my newsletter list on there, you get a free PDF document, which you do, and also you get a free advice sheet, tips and tricks sheet, which I've also created as well. So once you sign the email list, you'll be emailed a link to that particular private page where you can download those items, okay? So if you fancy painting a bird in watercolour, step by step, I know this isn't a bird, then sign up to my newsletter list on uh, devonartist.co.uk. So write it down, type it out, whatever you want to do. So you mustn't forget that because um, it says a free giveaway. Yeah, I'm generous, I know. Try to be anyway. 
So you can see I'm <laughs> gradually building up the details as I go along here. Gradually building them up. I was going to say about, uh, there's also a free video as well if you're interested on patreon.com forward slash 11 artists. Have a look on there for the uh, free video of a Robin. And as from the 31st of this month, this is a, is a major thing for you. I'll be uh, giving away another free video on how to paint a bird in watercolour step by step. And it's going to be over, I'm still editing the video. Um, that's going to be over probably about two and a half to three hours video footage, all in all, in three parts. And our part one will be here on YouTube, and part two and three will be on Patreon. But, you know, it's all free. I so said you don't have to exchange any details or anything on there. That's the beauty of it. So bear that in mind. Now, back to the painting. I've done a little bit of talk in there. As you can see, I've been very lightly, very lightly, kind of going over the painting with a dry brush. So a dry brush, I said bush then. So a dry brush, it's been a long day. And that's given all some of the effects I want on there to begin with for the eye. And I'm gonna go for a little bit of green, put a little bit more around there. Just a little bit. I don't want it too bright. I mean, it's a bit too bright at the moment, so I need to tone that down a little bit as well. This is um, quite an old brush, this one. There's another rosemary and co brush, but it's getting a little bit old now. So it's starting to get a little bit frayed. A bit like me, really. Okay. Right, so now into the, um, what did we use before? Raw Sienna. And again, we're going to slowly build up the layers bit by bit within this eye. You see, it's a slow process, but you can see it's slowly forming. I tend to do the pupil last when I'm working on a painting because um, that kind of gives you the added last kind of, you know, thing on the painting, on the eye, and really adds that life into it, apart from the highlights, of course, because that's really when you get that extra sparkle with an eye as well. Okay, so this now is using raw sienna again, but a little bit neater more of a creamy raw sienna just to brighten this color up a little bit more you can see how creamy that is as it's going on now this is quite dark towards the top of the eye so i'm just going to very i don't know just fill it in a little bit around there okay i'm going to very lightly soften shake any excess water off the brush you don't want it dripping all over your painting A little bit more down there just like the softening down and then I'm going to go in to the other color we had if you remember which is the burnt umber and burnt sienna and I'm trying to see well I might go for a little bit of cadmium orange in there as well and the color in question just to let you know is this one here so that's the cadmium orange just gone in and I want something fairly bright now for that, I'm going to tap a little bit of the colour off the brush. I don't want it too rich on there straight away. And this is where I need to start building up the overall shape. I'm adding even more detail into the eye. Got to remember we've got this kind of purpley blue um, kind of area down the side here, which we'll maintain. We'll add that in later on. The more layers, remember, you add, the more realistic the eye will be. It's all about taking your time with it, as I mentioned earlier as well. So just take your time, never rush it. Okay, and a bit more around there. Now, towards the center of the eye, there are some lines coming out. So I'm gonna very lightly, just two hairs in there. Hardly any paint left on this brush. I'm gonna make use of that. Very lightly, pull some lines out. We'll need, probably need to darken some of these anyway. Just pull a few out, like so. Oh, nearly, I've got to get some more. Just a few. You've got to think about a clock face when you're doing this as well, because you've got to think about that's the center of the clock where the hands go. And then some of these go right around the clock face at different clock times. So for example, that's going about eight o'clock, then down to seven o'clock, then six o'clock and so on. So one of the things I say to uh, my members on Patreon is that, you know, think about the clock face when you're painting because it helps keep you on track because especially if you're doing lots of uh, fur or even bird feathers, anything like that, 
It's so easy to kind of um, lose your way that little bit. It really is. Okay, just soften things down yet again. All seals it all in and just knocks it back just that little bit more. Okay, who we got on there? So I'm going to have a quick look at uh, YouTube now. Connie, hello Connie Grant. Uh, hello Paul, I love your paintings. I'm from Florida, USA. Yes, I do use watercolour white. Thank you very much indeed, Connie. Uh, thank you for being on here. Um, I've been on here for 25 minutes. It's going to be another 5 or 10 minutes. I'm going to shoot over to Facebook then. Okay, so bear that in mind. Uh, Connie Grant, oh, 2.26pm. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. And it's 7.34pm in the evening. Obviously PM at the moment here where we are. So time is ticking, really is. But hey, we don't mind, we quite enjoy it. So I'm gonna go for little bits of yellow ochre. Actually, it's not on my list there, but I just wanna brighten this up a bit more now. So it's not bright enough. You gotta remember that we put the pale tones, we put the light tones on first. I'm just adding on the, um, the mid tones now. So yellow ochre as a wash over the top of the detail. So you'll see the detail coming through, but we need to kind of really kind of knock it back a bit now. And this is the way you do it, layer upon layer upon layer. I'm trying to see around the outside of the eye, just, just nearer towards the pupil now. We've got some smaller marks. I'm going to add this into the wet paper. It's not soaking wet, it's just dampened down. That's all it is. Okay, I'm going to, going to go gradually darker now. This is nearly black at the top of the eye here, but I just want this colour underneath. Now, as I said, remember, I will be going on Facebook in about... I'll be off here in 10 minutes. I'm going to set the Facebook up then on the computer. Um, I'll be on there probably 15 minutes after leaving here, so bear that in mind. And then after Facebook, for about another half an hour, I'll be going live on Instagram. And you guess what my Instagram name is, don't you? The Devon Artist, there you go. Have a look on there as well. Just do a search for me on there and you find me. Okay, so if you are Instagram people, and that's working on this same painting all the way through. I know some people can't always get on all the platforms, so I'm sorry about that, but obviously I have to do this because it's all part of the, uh, the business strategy, which we tend to go off. Right, I'm just lightly blend that one and I think you know, all these little lines are put in I'm going to very lightly go over those as well just a little bit okay any more comments so we've got um, uh, Amidreza hello your painting method is great we say <laughs> say miniature in our country if you know yes I know what you mean the miniature paintings but I mean this is a little bit bigger I can't remember what the miniature size was does anybody know I can't remember what the sizing was for that now. Because there is a miniature painting style, isn't there? Um, oh, what are they called now? Can somebody help me out on that one, please? I can't remember what they call them now. Because I've, I've got the computer on, but I haven't got the right channel on. So I've obviously got you guys on here. Just lightly soften this down into there. Yeah, what is it called? Oh, I know the name of it. It's on the tip of my tongue. It begins with M, doesn't it? It really does. Right, okay, so that's that. Now I'm gonna go back to my double zero brush and then start thinking about a little bit more detail, more color. I'm gonna go darker now as well. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a bit of that brown. If you remember, that was a burnt on burnt sienna and pop it in to a little bit of black as well, just to go slightly darker. Now, even though the outside edge of this is quite dark. Oh, you know, I mentioned uh, black. Now, I tend to use lamp black as a colour, which I do. I do. I'll, I'll use white and black, I know. It's the way I prefer to paint. But if you want to mix your own black, then what you can do, I did one here, for example. You can do probably two or three layers of this will be fine. Phalo blue, alizarin crimson, and lemon yellow. Believe it or not, lemon yellow, yes. Will give you a black colour eventually give you a black color. So basically all you've got to remember is blue, red, and yellow to make a dark color. And um, you'll be able to do that from there. Okay. So, a quick look. And a little bit more down the side here. I haven't been on 30 minutes, so five more minutes I think I'll give it and I'm gonna go. Sorry guys. But I've got people waiting on Facebook as well. 
probably not. And just down the side. Now you can see how dark this is. It's not black out either. It's not a really dark colour, is it? But you can see the difference. Now it's starting to make even just something as simple as this. So I'm going to get some more brownie black. That's very technical, that, isn't it? Brownie black. And add that in. And a little bit more. Just the side there. Now I try and upload a video to YouTube on a weekly basis. So if you want to, if you do subscribe to my channel down below, oh yeah, as I say, if you do subscribe, remember to click on that bell icon because it's so important. Because at least then you will be notified when I put a new video on, so you don't miss it. Especially if it's uh, free advice, <laughs> which I like giving anyway. You know I do anyway. Anyone that knows me well. Just down the side. It's been a hot day here today as well. I'm sure it's hot where you are. And then along the top, again, I'm starting to work out and map out the overall shape of this now. Because this is really dark. It's dark from, it's not quite black down there. It's dark from this area all the way up to the top. So I need to start thinking about getting a little bit darker and adding this extra contrast in now. To start to give this eye some shape. So I'm washing the brush out in between. Just trying to think about this section here. So I think this needs to really go to there. So I'll wait for that to dry and get rid of that line there and pop it there instead. We can do things like that. We can move trees, as Bob Ross used to say. We really can. Now then, now for this layer of colour. I'm doing the same thing again as we did before. Starting from the bottom of the iris, then working your way up, adding this extra detail in. Not too much, not too little. You know, I'm tempted, you know, looking at the colour within there. I might add a little bit of yellow in there as well. Seriously. Just a little bit, though, not too much. There's some very pale, like a lemon yellow or gambo yellow. Anything like that, just to kind of brighten the eye a little bit more. But I can't do that until it's really dry. So when I leave here in just a couple of minutes' time, I will get the hairdryer out. I do own one if anybody's seen me. Don't know what I mean. And <laughs> I will dry the paint in before I go live on Facebook. Okay, a little bit more there and there. Oh, a bit too much. That's all right, we can get away with it. Look how dark this is going now. This is making a big difference already, it really is. And this isn't even really dark yet. Because you know yourself that you need dark to show light, you need light to show dark. And that's the beauty about watercolor, is that you gradually build up, as I said earlier on, from light to dark. I know some artists do it the way around. They go light, then dark, then work on the mid-tones. But I tend to work from light to dark, which is more traditional, other than using black and white, of course. Okay, so all I need to do with that one now, again, is light the soften it down with a size five brush. So you see I'm gradually building this up, step by step, taking my time. And that is a key, as I said earlier on, don't rush it. Take your time to get it right. Then once you've got it right, then you'll have it ready to start adding those finer details over the top and getting that overall shape of the eye itself. Right. Okay, one last check on here. That's all right, Connie, no problem at all. You're more than welcome. Um, and let's have a quick look, see if there's anybody else. <coughs> We've got a tickle cough now. Right, that'll do. Right, so remember one last thing, as I said, have a look on patreon.com for the free video tutorial on how to paint a robin, which I've put on there. It's about three hours long, I think, something like that. It's all free. You've got the outline drawing and the reference photograph just for you to have a play with. And as I mentioned as well, from the 31st of this month, I will have on here part one of how to paint a, a, bee, eat, a bee eater, I can't say now, a bee eater bird. Okay, so how to paint a bird in watercolour. It's a bee eater, a lovely, very colourful bird, and one which I'm sure you'll enjoy. I have put the preview video on here um, today. Actually, I'll put that on here. So uh, if you fancy having a go at that, again, that will be a freebie. Part one on YouTube and part two and three will be on Patreon, but again, it's free. No emails, no nothing exchange. Completely free for you to use and download the reference drawing and the photo. Okay, right. I need to give this a blast with a hairdryer now, and I'll be back to you on Facebook. Um, going live in about 15 minutes time. Just have a look on Facebook if you don't know who I am. Uh, the Devon Artist, just do that as a search criteria. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. And until next time around, when I go live again, um, we'll talk to you all again very soon. So, bye-bye.
Okay. Hi, once again, welcome to one of my watercolor tutorials. Now this time what we're working on is a great spotted woodpecker chick, which is this one here. We'll be working on the eye and also the detail that we can see within there. And also we're working on the detail within the feathers, trying to create that shape and the form, thinking about the directional brush strokes in order to create more of a realistic feel to the woodpecker. Once we've got the feathers on, then we're going to start thinking about the wood. Now the beauty about painting the wood on something like this as well, is that all this texture within the wood, you can change that, that's entirely your choice, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So if you want to just paint just parts of this and not all of this, you can do. If you want to change the texture or the colour, you can do, it's your painting at the end of the day. And not forgetting we'll also be working on the moss, I want to show you how to create the detail there. And I'm going to use a little bit of a different technique in order to create that kind of mossy look. But also we'll create like a vinaigrette feel around the outside of the painting as we go along. I'll show you exactly how I do that. And don't forget you'll also get the outline drawing, the reference photo and even the PDF document typed out by me with all my photographs as well on how to paint this great spotted woodpecker chick. So let's get started and let's get the brushes wet. I'll see you there. <laughs> 